Tonight we are meeting with our 2010 graduate, Dr. McEvenue, who was part of a team of surgeons who performed the first successful hand transplant operation in Canada. So take us way back to maybe little Giancarlo. <laughs> where did you grow up? Um, where did you end up going to college? And how did you come to attend SEVA? So I grew up in Toronto. I mean, I always wanted to be a doctor. I'm sure some of you guys have similar stories to that. I don't know where it came from. I was just like, I think that's what I want to do. Oh, I wanted to be an NHL player, but that didn't work out. And I was like, okay, I'm going to be the NHL team doctor. Yes, the Leafs doctor. It sounds like a good idea. I think it's important, like, you know, university's tough. And I think if you, you know, especially I went to University of Toronto undergrad, and it was like, it was horrible. The first year was horrible. I'm sure people can relate. The first, you know, the grades are like terrible. It, my grades were terrible. I'm, I'll never show that in a presentation. Uh, and I was just like, you know, a bit struggling. And then somehow I just found my way. I think maturity plays a big part in it. And then I was getting really good grades. You know, I just never gave up on the dream. And I, I forget the question a bit, but I think that's a good answer so, to so whatever it was. <laughs> I, the last part of it was, how did you come to attend SABA in particular? I really wanted to go to U of T. That was like, I was brainwashed from day one of U of T. Like, I see these guys with their fancy matching backpacks. But I kind of realized, like, that's not my dream. My dream isn't going to University of Toronto and saying I was at University of Toronto Medical School. My dream is becoming a doctor. And then when I spoke to a few graduates and the residency match list, which I thought was kind of like, I didn't really understand it, that's the most important thing. Like, if you look at the residency match list, not only where they're graduating, but how many of them are. Now tell us, you got on the plane and you made it to SABA. What were those first five semesters like? And then where did you do your clinical training? For me, I was like a fast adjustment. Like the weather was beautiful. I you dive right into your studies. Like I said, I was like diving into a cadaver pretty much, like <laughs> operating because your first course was anatomy, which was like, this is what I've been, this is what I've been waiting for. Like I've been doing all this BS. I don't know if I can say that for two years. <laughs> and then now I'm doing what I want to do. So it was like, for me, it was a really easy adjustment. I made some really good friends. Um, so Saba life was, was, was awesome. It is a quiet island. It's like a, um, more of a dive eco-touring island. So you're not like, you don't have casinos or like crazy stuff going on. And for a guy who can get distracted, I think that was like a blessing in disguise. <laughs> and you know, I studied a lot. And then clinicals, you know, the school really helped you set up the clinicals. And I liked moving around, and I wanted to go to university-affiliated hospitals, so I did extra work. Like, I went to Mayo Clinic for plastic surgery. Like, that was awesome. Like, I got a reference letter. I got to do surgery in the U.S. I got to do uh, surgery in all different American cities. I got to do surgery here in Canada. I did some electives here. Okay. It sounds like from day one you wanted to be a surgeon. Yeah. But what was it that led you to plastic and reconstructive surgery? Was there something in your clinical rotations? Or how did you get to that particular field in surgery? Yeah. So I was definitely like gung-ho surgery. And I actually never thought it would be possible, plastic surgery. Because, again, I was like, I'm coming from the Caribbean. This is going to be impossible. Uh, I should just be thankful for getting surgery. And surgery is hard enough to get into. It's extremely competitive. They want the best and the brightest. And, and so I'm like, yeah, I want surgery. So I did my elective here in Toronto, and I was able to set up um, two electives in surgery. And now it's, I think they have a lottery system because there's so many people that want to come to Toronto. It's, it's a very difficult thing to actually get the elective in what you want. But you have to be very flexible in terms of the timing, apply early, and maybe be flexible. And so for me, they're like, the general surgery is full. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> no. But uh, they were like, general surgery is booked up, but you can do ortho and you can do plastics. And I was like, great. Like, what a waste. Like, <laughs> grumbling. But then I was like, you know what? I'm going to do them both and I'll get a letter and they're from surgeons and then I can get into general surgery and this is going to work out fine. So I did ortho and I hated it. I was like, these guys are savages. They have <laughs> hammers and drills. This is a surgery. Surgery is delicate and gentle. And so I was like, I hate this. This has been a waste. I was like, I'm an emotional guy. I get all worked up, you know. And then, uh, so then I did plastics. And right from the beginning, I was like, this is incredible. And, um, but I'm never going to get it. So, you know, just do your best. And then one night, we had this lady who had attempted suicide. And she'd almost cut off her whole hand. And, uh, you know, I was a medical student. Again, right place, right time. Because the resident was off on a maternal leave. So I was like the de facto resident. So I got to like assess the patient, admit the patient, book the patient for surgery. 
you know, they're like, who is this guy? This guy's like the man. He's this, <laughs> the man medical student. And I, you know, we go under the microscope similar to what I showed you and we're reattaching kind of like the transplant, but it's a replant because it's our own hand and we're reattaching it and we're under the microscope and it's like the whole night surgery and I'm like in there and I'm doing everything and I'm like, this is having the time of my life actually. I was like, this is, I found what I want to do. Like, this is incredible. And at the end of the case, my boss is like, that was awesome. Like, are you sure you've never done microsurgery before? And I'm like, you know what? It's kind of like PlayStation 3. <laughs> and I'm going to tell my mom that all those years of video games <laughs> definitely paid off. Because <laughs> this was what, this, like, that's what it was. And he laughed. And he's like, well, you're, you're really good. And he goes, you should do this. Right. So um, c could you just tell us maybe some of the biggest things that you took from your education at Seba that got you to where you are today? You know, one of the biggest things I took was, like, the friendships. So I met, like, amazing people. And I don't think that's maybe particular to Seba, but, you know, the people at Seba are not, like, different from any other medical student. They were just people like me. And so I think that network and support has really helped me through my residency. Uh, the other thing would be, like, the work ethic. So, I mean, right from day one, you got to work really hard, and I was ready. I was like, I wanted the challenge, and so they set me up, and then, you know, I just took that with me all through residency, and then I had these great friendships that I could, like, you know, call and vent to about a rough day, or, you know, celebrate these great accomplishments together with. Okay.